सो हेलो गाइज ये वी हैव क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव फ्रॉम चेक एंड अंडरस्टैंड ये एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन फ्रॉम पाथ फाइंडर सो लेट लेट सी द क्वेश्चन अ स्मॉल बार मैग्नेट पी इज मूविंग विद अ कॉन्स्टेंट वेलोसिटी वी टुवर्ड्स अ फिक्स कंडक्टिंग रिंग ऑफ रेडियस ए अलॉन्ग इट्स एक्सेस एज शोन इन द फिगर इलेक्ट्रिकल रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द रिंग इज आर एंड इट्स सेल्फ इंडक्टेंस इज वैनिशिंगली स्मॉल द बार मैगनेट कैन बी मॉडल्ड एज मैग्नेटिक डाइपोल ऑफ डाइपोल मूवमेंट एम find force of interaction between the bar magnet and the ring so if you want to try this yourself you should pause the video and uh, do check it out when yourself okay so the hint is find the flux through the ring and hence the emf and current from which force can be found easily so yeah, if you uh, want to try it with the hint you can uh, go go ahead so yeah, now let's look at the solution the solution is uh, mainly very mathematical the only the basic idea here you going to be that's going to be used is th this thing which i said in the hint here due to the change in the flux through the ring as the uh, it is approaching the ring the flux through the ring will change it it will increase so the current in, uh, induced in the ring will be such that it will oppose the so origin of the change in flux so from here to find the current we will first need to find the change in flux and for that we need to find the flux so let's assume that the magnetic dipole is at p and the distance between p and the ring is z the radius of the ring is capital r let's consider a point on the uh, in the plane of the ring which is at a distance of small r from the axis and the magnetic field due to the dipole at this point can be shown in two components one is the radial component and one is the b theta so the b theta and b r for any general values ca can be written as b r equals to mu not by 4 pi times m times 2 cos theta by r cube and b theta can be uh, written as mu not by 4 pi times m times sin theta over r cube so from here for the flux through the ring we need a component of b which is parallel to the x axis so uh, first we will uh, write the components of b to uh, in x direction and in y direction at this point so from here we can see that bx equals to br cos theta minus b theta sin theta as this angle is theta and this angle is also theta so from here we can easily see this relation and on solving we get the value of bx to be this and similarly we can find the by to be this but notice that by is actually only in y direction for only this point at all other points it will be radially outwards like this like this like this so it is not necessarily in the y direction it is only for this point so now we find the flux through the we can find the flux through the ring which is integral of bx dot da and uh, you can uh, run through the integral yourself and it's just mathematics here so i'm skipping this part so in the end what uh, we get the value of flux as mu not m by 2 times a square over z square plus a square to the power 3 by 2 where a is the radius of the ring and uh, here the emf of the emf generated will be minus d phi by dt so differentiating this once and we know that uh, dz by dt equals to v so we have used that here so finally what we get is emf equals to 3 mu not m a square times z v over 2 times z square plus a square to the power 5 by 2 so now the force on the ring can be written as i times dl ideal cross b so here at every point uh, as we as i said earlier that the by is actually the magnetic field which is re pointing radially outwards in the plane of the ring so from here the uh, force will be i times l times b and this b y will be actually uh, it is as it has, as it is symmetric about that x axis so the b y will be actually uh, the uh, magnetic field pointing radially outwards at all the points so th uh, this is simply the product of th these three terms and we finally get the force to be this value now there is another way to look at it because this is a very general method and uh, this can be seen very easily but there is another method that we can uh, consider the magnetic dipole to be consisting of two monopoles just like we do it in electric dipoles only th only the problem is that this doesn't e exist in real life because magnetic mon monopoles cannot exist while electric dipoles uh, while electric monopoles can exist but this works uh, mathematically so uh, let's look at this solution also 
so here we assume that the magnetic monopole strength of of the mag uh, dipole is p and the distance between the distance of the dipole is d so from here what we get is first of all pd equals to m which where m is the uh, dipole strength and now to find the flux through the ring what we can do is that uh, an equivalent gauss law for magnetic monopoles can be written as uh, just uh, just like we write in term write in electric uh, for electric charges what we write is uh, flux equals to q over epsilon naught so here the flux will be remain same q will be replaced uh, replaced by the mag um, monopole strength p and uh, we know that one by epsilon naught can be replaced by mu naught so this will be the flux for a charge uh, for a magnetic monopole of strength p so that's what we have used here if you can see see here that the mm, uh, flux due to the uh, monopole plus p can be written as p times mu naught times the solid angle of the ring subtended over the total solid angle of uh, all all the, in all the directions which is p times mu naught times 2 pi times 1 minus cos theta over 4 pi and similarly for the monopole minus p the flux will be minus p times mu naught times 2 pi times 1 minus cos theta dash over 4 pi where theta and theta dash are the angles subtended by the ring at point uh, plus p and minus p so on solving this uh, we can see uh, and making the use of appropriate approximations we uh, we solve this uh, and finally we get that the flux equals to mu naught times m a square over 2 times a square plus z square to the power 3 by 2 this is the same as we got earlier and now differentiating this we get the emf now there is uh, one more uh, one more way we can solve from ahead of here now let's say that the power equals to force times velocity which will be equals to v square over r or epsilon square over r where r is the resistance in the ring so from here the force can be calculated very easily to be uh, the same value which we found in the earlier answer so yeah, these two methods are uh, you can be used to solve this problem the first method is quite general it can be uh, used in uh, any problem but the second method uh, is not very uh, appropriate in real life but it works mathematically so why not yeah so that's the final answer thank you